Hello. Wait, that was way too creepy. Start over. Boop. Welcome to 2017, everyone. I am way behind on getting videos done. I was probably being optimistic about getting two bundles done in one month. What would that month being full of? Holidays, work, and then followed immediately by MAGFest. So while I'm playing catch up, let's cover a bunch of old games all at once. Just like the last video. Thought I had something catchier than that. Like last time, I'm taking a quick look at a bunch of games I received through the Humble Monthly Bundle. This is a fun monthly Loot Crate style service where you pay a subscription fee, get a bunch of games, and part of your subscription fee goes to worthy charities. Quick reminder, of course, these are just first impressions, quick looks at the games, not full-blown reviews. I may add some of these games to my late reviews list at some point, but that list is already getting pretty full. Yeah, I'm slow, I know. So let's open up the November Bundle and see what gaming goodness we get. Er, got. Because it's January, and I'm bad at tenses. T -t -t Start the thing. Ah, Stardew Valley. It really is nice now and then to step away from violent games and just play something where you do something constructive and peaceful, where you can plant and grow crops, raise chickens and other animals, delves into scary mines and fight for your life against slimes and shadow monsters. D Wait, let me start over. Stardew Valley is, at its heart, a tribute to Harvest Moon, the classic Nintendo farming sim RPG game. You create a character and then your grandfather, who may be Santa Claus, dies and leaves you a farm out in the country. You're given a lot of freedom on how you want to earn your living. Farm, ranch, fish, mine, fight monsters and said mines. You don't really need to focus on one aspect too much, except that you do in order to complete the game's plot of restoring the community center. You're given a pretty clear list of chores and objectives pretty early on, but actually collecting all the crap you need to complete them can be tedious. I'm probably sounding more negative than I mean to be, but I'm just addressing the fundamental flaws in copying the Harvest Moon game tropes. I actually prefer it to most of the recent Moon games because the characters are a little more fleshed out and colorful, not just two-dimensional stock characters, and you have a lot more freedom to farm, craft, and build the way you want. You're not going to get a lot of thrills out of this game, but it's a great way to just unwind, relax, and maybe indulge any OCD tendencies you may have. It's also a great game to play windowed and catch up on YouTube videos or podcasts in the background. Definitely worth checking out if you like these kinds of games. Next! From the makers of Hotline Miami comes one of the funnier games I've played in a while. It's like they mashed up Contra and Super Meat Boy in a blender and poured in Bud Light, mixed in some bald eagle feathers, and made a smoothie out of it to drink while working out. You play a broad version of iconic action movie characters as you blow up terrorist strongholds. You die with one hit or one fall, so the action is pretty fast and messy. You liberate an area, and it blows up as a wicked metal guitar solo plays. Action-heavy side-scrollers aren't usually my thing, but I found myself enjoying this. Each hero's differing combat styles and weapons made some of the combat annoying, especially combined with the platforming bits, but the gleeful destructive energy behind it made it fun to play, even when I was dying a lot. I'm curious to try the co-op sometime too, I could see this being goofy fun with a like-minded friend. Also, Blade is apparently a well-known action character? I mean, the movies were okay, I guess, except maybe that third one. Anyway, next! Wow, I can't remember the last time I played a good space game. Not counting Mass Effect, because that was more of an action RPG in space. space. The plot involves you tracking down an estranged aunt, doing odd jobs and sometimes less than legal jobs for her friends to advance the plot, and generally doing odd jobs to upgrade your ship and open up more of the world. Right off the bat, I like that the Y-axis is fixed, so you don't have to be Microsoft Flight Simulator certified to travel around space in your ship. So far, it seems like a fairly standard space sim RPG thing, but I'm liking the aesthetic and tone of it. It has this space western feel to it, like Firefly, especially in the soundtrack, just minus the colorful cast. I know some space sim fans will hate that it doesn't have full 360 degree flying and combat, but I don't really feel like it took too much away from the actual gameplay and makes it easier for new people to get into it. Definitely going to play this one some more, so consider this a recommendation. Next! Beyond Eyes is a title I noticed a while ago and never got a chance to pick it up until now. It tells the story of a little girl named Ray who loses her sight in an accident, then befriends a stray cat. Cat goes missing, so she goes looking for it. The story seems simple, but the genius is in the gameplay. 
because Rei is blind, her perception is limited and the player can't see much until they get close to something. And even then, what she's hearing may not be what the object actually is. Loud objects can be seen from far away, and Rei slowly fills in her environment once she's gotten close or interacted with it. I love the watercolor painted style to the visuals. It matches how a child would try to remember what things looked like in a general sort of way without the fine details. Beyond Eyes is not without its flaws, though. The slow walking pace and limited visual range does impair the gameplay and the pacing becomes irritating, but those are necessary flaws for the story it wants to tell. Just when I was reaching a point of boredom or frustration, the game would throw a neat little twist at me. For example, there was a particularly brilliant bit where you encounter a towering wall of intimidating black smoke, and from the sound of it I deduced it must be a busy road. This was a great way to represent how terrifying a road and cars must seem to someone who can't see. So overall this one seems to have potential as long as I'm in a patient mood. Definitely going to play this one some more. Next. Cathy Rain is a point-and-click mystery game, which is something I haven't seen out in a while. I especially like the main character being a female protagonist and not some quiet, bookwormy detective type, but a tough, confident lead who's not above dropping an F-bomb in front of authority figures. As usual, I didn't get too far into the game for this video, so I don't want to talk about the plot too much and I'm not sure where it's going, but I can say I'm intrigued and I like the characters. The voice acting is above average, but I do like how there's an option to disable voices and just read the dialogue. The art style is probably the only problem I have with the game so far. Everything in Kathy Rain is styled like an old-school adventure game. From the look at, touch, use, get, command style, user interface, to the graphics, which is what's bugging me. It came out in 2016, but it still has the weird pixelated design of the first Monkey Island. I can certainly understand wanting to stick to a certain art style or motif like this, but everything looks like it was hand-drawn and then run through a file compression program eight times. Tentative recommendation for me so far, just because you don't see these kinds of games often enough, and I want to encourage the developers. Next! This one's been on my wish list for a while, so I was happy to get it in the bundle. Styx plays like a stereotypical dark fantasy game mixed with Assassin's Creed, where you play a goblin like construct trying to steal a magic MacGuffin from a heavily fortified human city. I'm usually a fan of sneaky stealth games, but this one's not quite appealing to me for a couple of reasons. First, it really needs a quick save function because the autosave takes you back to the start of a level, so if you get spotted halfway through an area and can't fight your way out, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. Second, the controls are pretty solid overall, but steering sticks around is just a bit awkward, and the levels are cluttered with just enough stuff or the climbs are just a bit too finicky, so I found myself knocking into junk and alerting guards or missing a ledge and taking a hard, loud landing a bit too often. I'm hoping it's just one of those games where you have to get used to the gameplay or it gets better after the first couple of hours, but it was struggling to hold my attention for this quick playthrough. Next. Not too much to say about this one, it's a fun little throwback to the old Game Boy days. Though honestly it plays more like an LCD Tiger handheld game. And yes, I'm old enough to remember and have actually owned and played both of those things. <sighs> it's a cute little game, and the options to customize the sound and display are a nice little touch, but not enough for me to keep playing it for long stretches. I've kind of outgrown this style of game, but I can see it becoming addictive in the right hands, and if nothing else, it's good for a nostalgia kick. Next. The exclusive Humble Bundle title for this month, Keyboard Sports, may be one of the silliest games I've played in a long time. Keyboard Sports is a series of mini-games where you control your character not just with a few set controls on your keyboard, but the entire keyboard. It mostly involves dodging and navigating environments using a control scheme you're not used to, like a game to teach typing but never gives you any word prompts. It's not trying to be serious at all, so I enjoyed it as light-hearted, goofy fun. Nothing too deep or memorable, but it's got charm and novelty on its side, which is what the Humble exclusives seem to be good at. So yeah, I recommend checking this one out if you can. Done! So that was the November Humble Monthly Bundle. Humble, 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 humble. I'm gonna get this right one these months. Humble Bundle. So that was the November Humble Monthly Bundle, and I will be taking a look at the December Bundle just as soon as I have enough free time to play through six games again. 
At the time of this video, the January bundle is out, so I will be taking a look at that, of course, and the February bundle is still available if you want to subscribe now. The early unlock for that one is XCOM 2, which is a game I really recommend, and it retails for about $30 to $60. Considering that the subscription fee is $12 a month, and you can cut it off at any time, you're basically paying $12 for a $50 to $60 game, and you get five other games for free. What is not good about this deal? Do it! Do it now! Not to promise anything, but you'll probably be seeing another short video from me soon just on XCOM 2. <gasps> Spoilers! Once again, I probably don't have to do this, but I will reiterate that I am not being paid anything by Humble Bundle or any of the companies that they represent or any of the charities they represent. I'm just doing this because I want to. And also, I'm a masochist, apparently, for wanting to do so many games all at once. In the meantime, please do like, share, subscribe, all those other things you're supposed to say at the end of videos. And until next time, video over.